Buonasera, benvenuti e benvenute all'Istituto Italiano di Cultura di New York. Sono Massimo Sarti, sono I'm the Deputy Director of the Italian Cultural Institute and I would like to welcome all of you also on behalf of uh, Fabio Finotti, who is the director who unfortunately cannot be with us uh, tonight. Uh, so, qui non è New York. This is not New York, okay? <laughs> so actually, don't worry, it is New York. But as you know, qui non è New York, here is not New York, is the title of the event we are presenting, uh, we are presenting tonight. Um, it's a story that the two journalists, uh, Maria Teresa Cometto and Glauco Maggi, that I would like to welcome uh, from the very beginning with a warm applause. So two special correspondents uh, uh, for the Italian Cultural Institute uh, will give uh, uh, of the trip reportage that uh, they made last summer in the United States in search of the other America, the real and authentic America, question mark. So 9,000 miles on the road from New York uh, to Los Angeles uh, and back uh, to discover beside the familiar site and the tourist imagination, places that are uh, closer to the true heart of this, uh, of this great country. So I'm planning uh, a 10 days trip in the coming days, so I'll be very, I'm very happy to listen to you because I have not yet decided where to go. So Maria Teresa and, and Glauco, I mean, probably they don't need to be introduced, but uh, I'd like to, to say something. Uh, Maria Teresa Cometto and Glauco Maggi are Italian journalists and authors, uh, wife and husband, with a daughter and two grandchildren in New York since 2000 and US citizens since 2018. They are co-authors of Figli e Soldi, both winners of the prestigious Amerigo Journalism Prize awarded to journalists who report on the United States uh, to, the Italian, uh, to the Italian public. Maria Teresa Cometto writes for Corriere della Sera and has published several books, including Emma and the Angel of Central Park, recently presented here in Italian and in English. La Marchesa Colombi, Life, Novels and Passions of the First Journalist of Corriere della Sera, edited by uh, Solferino. Tu Montanari, Arturo Endoreste Squinobal, from the Alps to the Himalayas. Born in Novara, graduated in philosophy from the University La Statale di Milano. She is Knight of the Order of Merit of the Italian Republic. Glauco Maggi writes about politics and economics for La Stampa, Investire, and the website money.org. IT. He has published, uh, among other things, Ron DeSantis, the Italian-American who challenged Trump, The Lone Warrior, Trump and the Mission Impossible, and uh, Obama Dimezzato. His regular guest at the policy breakfast uh, of the Bruno Leone Institute, born uh, in Milan, he graduated in political science from the University Statale di Milano. So now the floor is yours. Please turn off the lights because uh, I mean the lights are better. And after after the presentation after the talk, there will be a session for Q and A. And as you saw outside, we have fantastic drinks. Ti devo togliere questo e metterti. Aspetta, che ti devo togliere. If you wonder which city is it is, uh, it is Jackson, the capital of Mississippi. And uh, we are not going to talk about it. Jackson, <laughs> but the picture was so nice, right? Beautiful. 
Okay, so um, thank you all for coming. We see many friends, including some friends uh, who suggested the title of uh, our two trips, because actually this is the second trip that we uh, did uh, as a uh, in Viati Speciali of uh, the Italian Cultural Institute. In 2021, we did uh, uh, the same thing, but in the northern states, um, from uh, uh, New York to Portland and back. And uh, uh, last year, instead, we decided to um, go through the southern states. Uh, OK, this is a, a map from which you can see uh, all uh, our 50 legs. So we spent two months, almost two months, uh, exploring the other America. And as I said, here, some uh, friends uh, in, uh, inspired us to call it uh, this is not Nuova York, because many, many years ago, a very famous uh, uh, Rai correspondent from uh, um, Italy, but the New York correspondent, uh, uh, used to start his correspondence saying, um, Buonasera, vi parla Ruggero Orlando da Nuova York. So this instead is not uh, uh, Nuova York. No, it's not Nuova York. Um, so as I said, um, we started from New York, OK? And we first go, went south um, uh, along the Atlantic coast, uh, down to Savannah. Then we moved west um, and through uh, um, Arkansas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, Arizona, to uh, Los Angeles, and back uh, even so more south, um, Texas, uh, and then uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, Alabama. Then we came back along the Appalachian uh, Mountains. So it was uh, uh, very, we had a lot of fun. Uh, we learned a lot of things. That we, just to give you an idea, so it was uh, 50 places we visited. Uh, um, we covered 9,000 9, 9, miles. We visited 15 states, nine capitals, seven national parks five presidential libraries, libraries uh, and 23 museums uh, and historic sites. So it was, uh, it was something. I, I'm, I hope that you will uh, find some inspiration for your, from your trip. Uh, we were looking always for something different from the very well-known places and uh, trying to understand whether Americans are really so divided, polarized, and angry as we see on social media and on mainstream media. For example, we didn't visit New Orleans, because everybody knows in New Orleans, but we went to Baton Rouge. We didn't visit the Grand uh, Canyon, but uh, uh, less known uh, national parks uh, like the Blue Ridge Parkway, and so on. Okay, so the first uh, photos that we are going to show you are about Charleston in South Carolina. Um, this is the Hampton Park in Charleston. Uh, South Carolina with the beautiful Spanish moss that you see typical of uh, these states uh, hanging from the oak trees. Uh, we went to Charleston because uh, it, it was a, an important leg of another trip that inspired us, the trip that Frederick Law Olmsted made before the Civil War in, in 1853-54 and before becoming the architect of Central Park. Uh, he did it uh, as a correspondent for the New York Times uh, to understand uh, how the economy of slavery worked, or, or not worked, didn't work. Charleston was important because 30,000 slaves from, America, from Africa landed uh, in its port, more than in any other American port. We followed part of Olmsted's journey from Raleigh to Charleston to Savannah, and then west uh, through Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Texas, because one of the issues uh, we wanted to explore was racism. Well, in this park, uh, hidden, hidden there, you see, it's very small in the middle of the park. We, uh, uh, it, it was not easy to find him. Uh, it is the monument of Denmark Vesey, who was hanged in 1822 for organizing a mass uprising against slavery. He's considered a hero of the abolitionist movement, but uh, only almost 200 years later, the city of Charleston decided to dedicate uh, this monument to him, and anyway, they placed it in, uh, 
in a place where nobody, nobody goes really. Um, okay, you Glauco. Fifteen, a white supremacist killed nine members of the congregation. You remember the fact. President Joe Biden visited the church one month uh, uh, a half ago, just to emphasize the, the, the situation with the, the uh, racism issue. Uh, we went there last August, and since it was a Sunday, we went to Mass. Re the Reverend, during the Mass, repeated the same message many times, quote, what they took from you, Jesus gives back to you, unquote. No sign of anger or desire for revenge, not even on the poster outside the church that explains that the memorial planned to remember the victims will celebrate, quote, the wonderful grace of God and the splendid manifestation of forgiveness that followed. Uh, we visited oh. okay. yeah. We visited uh, several new museums uh, during our trip. This is the International African American Museum, inaugurated in 2023, pretty new. It tells uh, the origins uh, and the history of slavery very well, and it also talks about today. There are videos of African Americans who tell their experiences of how racism is still alive in America. Here uh, we also learned that Charleston's uh, first source of wealth uh, was uh, rice. Thanks uh, to the slaves uh, imported from the northwestern coast of Africa, where they had uh, known how to grow rice for hundreds of years. Those slaves uh, built the rice fields uh, and cultivated them in South Carolina. This is again uh, Charleston, and it is the entrance of uh, uh, the College of Charleston. I am uh, with uh, Giovanna De Luca, a professor of Italian and film in this college. She is one of the Italian professors uh, that we met uh, during our trip because we were interested uh, um, in uh, understanding how popular Italian, the language, uh, is in American colleges. Giovanna told us that Italian is very cool in Charleston, which, by the way, she told us uh, uh, the city has recently become a fashionable destination for New Yorkers. During the pandemic and uh, even later, uh, many New Yorkers moved uh, to Charleston. Um, Charleston is gemellata, twinned with Spoleto, because it was chosen by the composer Giancarlo Menotti as a venue for the American version of the Spoleto Festival of uh, Two Worlds. Every October in Charleston there is also the Nuovo Cinema Italiano Film Festival that Giovanna created and always organizes. She told us that Italian student uh, studies in the college are very popular. This year there are around 600 students studying Italian and everyone would like to go to our country to study for a few months. This is one of the most popular guys uh, at the college. This is uh, Leonardo D'Ambrosio, another example of how cool Italians are in Charleston. Leonardo uh, is one of the most popular athletes at the College of Charleston. He is from Turin and plays in the college's soccer team. He is here because while he was in high school in Italy, he was contacted by one of the many agencies that look for students who are good at a sport and offer them to go to American colleges. Colleges are very interested in recruiting sporting talents because having strong sport teams is a way of attracting more students. So they recruit talents from everywhere, including from Italy, and offer them scholarships to cover all university expenses. Leonardo's story could be inspirational for other Italian students who excel in one sport or in another. Uh, going west, um, we went through Arkansas, and this is Little Rock. This is the presidential library of uh, Bill Clinton in Little Rock, the capital of Arkansas. We visited five presidential libraries and discovered that they are 
a lot of fun and very informative. Every presidential library has something special, unique. Here is a faithful replica of the Oval Room in perfect scale with the original. A photo at this at his desk cost $15. On the fifth floor, there is a large apartment where uh, Bill Clinton stays and sleeps when he visits Little Rock. Also, Hillary Clinton sometimes comes here for an event, but she doesn't sleep here, never. <laughs> In the panels uh, that tell the story of the Clinton's presidency, the name Monica Lewinsky is not mentioned. <laughs> Less than an hour from the Clinton Museum is a Little Italy. It's a real town. It's a town with uh, around 500 people. 75 of them are descendants of the 15 families who originally settled here between 1915 and 1920, mainly from Veneto. They made a fortune by cultivating vine vineyards and producing wine, which was worth its weight in gold during prohibition and was sold and drunk during the three-day grape festival. One descendant of the Italian pioneers, Chris Dorer, still lives in Little Italy and uh, is the curator of the Italian Heritage Museum that was opened in 2019 and financed by the city's Italian-American families. The Grape Festival is uh, celebrated today with uh, 1,500 visitors and raises funds for the local church of San Francesco. Okay, this is uh, again Arkansas, and this is the Crystal Bridges Museum in Bentonville, the birthplace and the headquarters uh, of Walmart, the Walmart supermarket chain, the stereotype of US capitalism and consumerism. So probably nobody would think of going for a weekend there, but we recommend a long weekend there because uh, Bentonville was one of the beautiful surprises of our trip. Uh, today is considered the new capital of cool. It has grown by 53% to almost uh, 58,000 residents uh, since the museum was inaugurated in uh, 2011. The museum was created by Alice Walton, one of the four children of the founder of Walmart. It's all free, the architecture is amazing, and it is really a bridge between uh, two natural ponds uh, the art is uh, very interesting, both inside and outdoor, the museum. Uh, Bentonville is beautiful also because it's in the green uh, Ozark Hills, full of uh, trails for walking and biking. This is one trail from the museum uh, to downtown. And Bentonville has also very good restaurants. This is a burrata of chef Neil Gray, who used to work for the three Michelin star French laundry in Napa Valley. We ate uh, the burrata at the Preacher's Son restaurant in a former Gothic revival style church, one of several good restaurants in Bentonville. So we really recommend a long weekend there, a lot of fun. This is Oklahoma City. Capital. Oklahoma City, capital of Oklahoma. This is one of the new museums we visited. The first American museum in Oklahoma City, the capital of the States. It is the first museum uh, for Native Americans, curated only by Native Americans. The architecture is beautiful, and it tells the history of the, the 29 tribes that live in this state. Five nations have always lived, been here. The others have been forcibly deported during uh, migrations imposed by the federal government. It's called the, quote, Trail of Tears, unquote. Thousands of Indians had to walk for years, even for almost a thousand miles from their lands to Oklahoma. We have learned, among other things, that only in 1924, Congress and the White House gave the Native American citizenship and all rights, including voting rights. Yeah, before 1924, they were not citizens. Uh, it's amazing. We didn't know about that. 
uh, Amarillo, Texas. We move to, um, to Texas. This uh, is the big Texan steak ranch in Amarillo. We tried to taste local cuisine everywhere we went, but unfortunately, food was not the best part of our trip. <laughs> um, Amarillo, Amarillo is very important mm, as a, mm, because it handles 90% uh, of Texas beef business. And this restaurant uh, is famous because it offers a free dinner to anyone who orders a 72 ounce steak, almost two kilos, and finishes it in an hour. If you can't make it, you pay the full 72 dollars, not so much. We ate a normal one pound steak. Each? And finished. Each. And, and pay half the <laughs> This is a Cadillac ranch. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, these are the uh, steaks prepared on these grills. Okay. This is a Cadillac ranch. Ten Cadillacs half buried in a field a few hundred meters from Route 66. It's a work by the collective of artists and architects of the Ant Farm based in San Francisco and financed by the Texan millionaire Stanley Marshall III. People come here to write on the Cadillacs with the spray cans. Here we met Joseph. He heard us talking Italian and told us that he was Italian-American, originally from Calabria. He's one of the many Italians or Italici, lovers of Italy, we met on our journey. And uh, talking about uh, Route 66, uh, very famous, uh, it's not uh, easy to follow it uh, because uh, the directions are not always very clear and in many places uh, it uh, does not exist anymore. So in Arizona we got lost <laughs> and we found ourselves on, on, a, on dirty roads called, uh, I don't know if you can see it, Geronimo Drive and Navajo Road. We were quite uh, desperate because there were no signs anywhere of course, the cell phones didn't work, uh, so we went on driving. And, uh, but it's amazing that even here in the middle of nowhere, there are people living. You see the mailboxes, and uh, who knows where the houses are? Uh, yeah, finally, we got back on 66 on, uh, you see, this amazing landscape. And uh, we must say that uh, the stretch from uh, Kingman to Ottman in Arizona is uh, certainly, for us, the most beautiful of Route 66. It is also the least traveled and the wildest. In fact, we found very, very few cars uh, driving, <laughs> driving here. Uh, at a certain point, uh, there, there are signs like this. Uh, watch for the donkeys. Uh, the donkeys were used used to, uh, uh, were used to transport gold uh, when the mines uh, operated here from the beginning of the 20th century to 1942 when the mines were closed. Now the donkeys are wild and graze everywhere, a living symbol of the far west of the frontier era. Uh, the road is narrow, very steep uh, and winding through the mountains, but it is uh, really worthwhile and uh, there is nobody around. After a mountain pass, we arrived to Ottman. That was uh, a major gold rush center at the beginning of last century, uh, when it had uh, up to 10,000 people. Now it is a ghost town uh, with only 100 people. They live uh, managing saloons and souvenir shops uh, on the main street of the village. Uh, <laughs> we discovered when we arrived here that we took the uh, hardest uh, road to go there, but from the other side <laughs> it's uh, very easy and there were many cars coming from the other side and staying the other side, but uh, it was really amazing. Oh, and talking about Route 66, uh, that we celebrate 100, 100 years uh, uh, in 2026, so in uh, two years only, Another surprise was uh, to know that uh, Donatella D'Avanzo, um, a photographer and anthropologist from Trieste, Italy, here with uh, her husband, uh, is the mm, best expert in America about, uh, about Route 66. Uh, we met her in, uh, not uh, in Ottoman, but in uh, Albuquerque, Kirk, uh, 
um, she's working on a project sponsored by the national parks on the ethnicity of Route 66, and she hopes to finish it uh, by 2026, as I said, to celebrate 100 years from the birth of the mother route. Donatella explained to us that uh, what drives Americans to love and travel Route 66, in her opinion, is nostalgia for the 60s. But she is interested in understanding what happens today on Route 66 to the communities that still live there or that have abandoned it. So we, the, uh, um, the last leg on the west was uh, uh, around Los Angeles. We didn't go to Los Angeles for the same reason, not to visit the usual place. This is close to Pasadena. California. Pasadena, California, it's a completely, uh, a completely different uh, scenario. These are some of the Italian scientists who work at the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory in La Cagnada Flintridge, California. It is a small sample of Italian excellence in the USA. Excellence not only in uh, popular fields uh, like uh, the usual food, uh, fashion and art, but also in science and technology. Tourists uh, can visit the JPL, where, among other things, uh, there is the center of the universe, the control room for space missions, and the National Historic Site. We visited uh, it uh, thanks to the hospitality of uh, Paolo Focardi, one of the 30 Italian uh, s scientists at JPL. We met 13 of them. They were very kind, uh, gathering together, and uh, we... we, we talk with them. Paolo explained to us, we are almost all engineers, each of us coming here on our own merits and involved in many different uh, projects. Our missions serve to explore the universe and answer scientific questions such as whether life is possible on other planets. Our missions also serve to monitor the Earth from space, to collect uh, useful data to improve our lives. For example, one of the latest missions, surface water and ocean topography, will uh, make a map of the height of water on Earth, which is important for studying climate change." Unquote. This one is, uh, this, this uh, guy is Marco Dolci, with the twin of Persever Perseverance, the rover of the Mars sample return mission, that will bring back to Earth samples of materials taken from the surface of Mars. Marco explained to us that the twin is used to test the functioning of the rover's systems on Mars, and its robotic arm is the result of a collaboration between JPL and the Italian aerospace company Leonardo. Mm -hmm. so By the way, ma on many times you yeah. are very proud. Yeah, <laughs> to be Italian. Uh, on the center of universe, people get married. So people uh, fond of uh, Mars or uh, space uh, mission can ask to get married over there. Yeah. We saw pictures of uh, weddings there. Another Italian excellence. Here we are with Daniele Struppa, an Italian professor specializing in quantum mechanics. Since 2016, he has been the president of Chapman, an important uh, private Californian university in Orange, not far from the JPL. Daniele is a former researcher at the Scuola Normale di Pisa and a full professor at the University of Calabria. At Chapman, he has developed a strategy for growth based on hiring professors who inspire and attract other teachers and students. So he hired the Nobel Prize winner in economics, Vernon Schmidt, and the famous physicist, Yakir Aharonov, who are fostering interdisciplinary debate and research. Uh, near Orange, um, there is a special White House. It is the Anaheim White House restaurant created by Bruno Serato. He's here in front of one of the frescoes in his uh, restaurant inspired by Italian uh, masterpieces. Bruno is not just an excellent chef, he's famous in America for his uh, charitable initiative. CNN named him one of the 10 heroes of the year in 2011. 
Since 2005, Bruno has been cooking and serving pasta for poor children in the area around his restaurant, th uh, that is the area around uh, Disneyland also. Uh, now he serves uh, 100,000 dishes a month, and his initiative is being copied in Mexico, Asia, and Africa. And uh, this is the grand finale of uh, a very good dinner we had at the restaurant that we recommend. Um, it is uh, um, Bruno's signature dessert, uh, souffle with chocolate and vanilla cream. You, you should try it. Okay, so from um, Parasadina, Orange, and so on, we went south to San Diego, and then from San Diego back uh, even uh, more south. Um, so along, uh, along the um, border with Mexico and then the ocean before coming back north. Uh, mm -hmm. This is another special place, Bisbee, Arizona. Yes, it's special and uh, curious and uh, for, for athletes uh, wherever in the, in the world. Bisbee in Arizona is another beautiful surprise. It's uh, in the mountains and it's uh, unique for the thousands of steps that the Roosevelt's New Deal workers dug in the 1930s to make life easier for the people living here. This is the sign advertising Bisbee 1000, a seven kilometer race up and down a thousand of those, those steps. It is held every October and uh, we are thinking to go back and run it yes. one day. In fact, uh, Bisbee is a very pleasant uh, small city. There, for the first time, we felt like we were in Europe or rather in some Italian mountain villages. The people here call themselves uh, Europeanesque. Between the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the last century, Bisbee was the most important city from St. Louis, Missouri, to San Francisco, California, because it had the richest copper mines in the country. The golden age of copper ended in the 1975, the exhausted mine was got closed and the city died, but it was uh, resurrected by artists and hippies. Houses and walls in Bisbee are painted with bright colors and murals. Yeah, it is really fun. Uh, it, remind, yeah. it, it reminds us uh, the Bussana Vecchia. Yes, the, the rebirth in Liguria, of Bussana yes, Vecchia. That was destroyed Bussana by Vecchia. an earthquake and uh, revitalized by artists, uh, hippies, uh, and so on. Um, okay, going west, uh, this is the road through Cave Creek Canyon, the so-called island in the mountains of uh, Arizona. Uh, again, you see not many tourists, and this was uh, uh, August, September, September, I think. Uh, and uh, this is the visitor center uh, where we met Rich Evans, a volunteer ranger. He explained uh, that uh, this island is the geographical and geolo geological uh, center where four different habitats intersect, uh, a real paradise for entomologists and bird watchers, uh, and for hikers also, uh, like us. Only here, for example, does the elegant trogon bird uh, live. It is this uh, uh, big bird, uh, and we found some uh, bird watchers uh, spending hours trying to have a picture uh, of him and they didn't succeed. Um, Evans uh, was uh, an uh, mm, automotive. automotive engineer in El Paso, Texas. He told us that uh, one Sunday morning with uh, his wife, uh, he had watched a program on TV about this uh, Cave Creek Canyon and uh, they said, oh, it looks nice, let's go for a ride. And since they retired, they moved there and now they are living there. Um, it is not uh, an isolated life, uh, he explained, because in this area there are many, many graduates and researchers with a passion for science and for life uh, in nature, and social life is active. Uh, people meet uh, in many clubs in the evenings or weekends and, and so on. Uh, in this uh, um, canyon, in this uh, uh, park, there is also the southern, southwestern research station of the American Museum of Natural History of New York. You can see there the, the sign. 
um, its mission is to assist the researchers who come here from all over the world to study the countless species of birds and insects and sometimes discover new ones. Among them, there is an Italian researcher, Marco Molfini of the University of Rome, an entomologist who discovered four particular species of insects in this island. The wall, this is the wall uh, in Arizona and Texas. El Paso, Texas. This is the wall that we saw in Arizona and in Texas on the border with Mexico. And these are immigrants around the Sacred Heart Church where there is one of the centers that assist immigrants in El Paso, Texas. Mm, the town, the, the city is one of the major ports of entry for regular immigrants. Those who present themselves at the border guards and apply for asylum, almost uh, 1,000 are currently arriving in the city every day and the number is increasing. We visited another center that assists immigrants, the Annunciation House, and we spoke with a young volunteer, Alana. She's uh, from uh, Philadelphia, where uh, she has just graduated in mathematics and computer science. Elana explained to us that immigrants are released immediately after registering at the border. Then they have to wait for the court hearing to assess whether they have a valid reason for requesting asylum. They must not say, quote, I want asylum to live a better life, unquote. But they must convince the judges that they fled from their country because their lives were in danger or because they were heavily discriminated against for racial, political, or sexual reasons. But the wait for the court hearings is very long, and in the meantime, the immigrants go anywhere, including here in your city. And the situation has become a huge social, economic, and political problem, as all you know. know. The paradox is that on a hill, very close to this social drama, there is the University of Texas at El Paso that uh, has built its campus imitating the style of the monasteries of Bhutan. Bhutan is the Himalay Himalayan kingdom that invented the gross national happiness as a measure of people's well-being. Uh, the university has exhibitions about Bhutan and its happiness philosophy. The reason, goes, the reason of this uh, strange, uh, awkward ideas, architectural ideas, goes back to the beginning of the 20th century when the rector's wife fell in love with a national geographic cover dedicated to their country. And she was uh, really, really convincing, <laughs> evidently. Well, wives are important. <laughs> OK. Um, a friend uh, earlier asked me which uh, place uh, 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 is in our heart after this uh, uh, trip, and I answered that uh, especially people um, are in our heart, and one of the people we met is uh, this one, Opal Lee. Um, Opal Lee, this is uh, her house in Fort Worth, uh, Texas, and uh, uh, she welcomed us and told us her extraordinary story with a message very similar to that of Martin Luther King Junior, uh, whose house, uh, grave, uh, and museum we visited in Atlanta, Georgia. Opal is 96 years old, and they called her the grandmother of Juneteenth, because it is thanks to her that Juneteenth became a national holiday in 2021. It is the celebration of the true end of slavery in the United States, uh, which occurred on June 19, 1865, when the Union soldiers reached Galveston, in Texas, the most southern town in the former Confederate rebel states, and put the emancipa Emancipation Proclamation into practice. For years, uh, Opal had advocated for making Juneteenth a national holiday without succeeding. So when she was 89, she launched herself into an extreme challenge. She told us, quote, it had taken two and a half years for Lincoln's decree 
to become to be respected then i decided to walk every day two and a half miles approximately four kilometers from my home to the capital washington dc and uh, uh, ask the parliament uh, and the president to declare Juneteenth a national holiday. She finally got it. I, we must say helped also by many people who uh, gave her uh, lifts in her, their cars. She didn't walk <laughs> all the way, really, but she traveled all the way. Her parents were victim, uh, victims of racism and her own life was not easy, but uh, there is no trace of anger or aggression in, uh, in uh, uh, her tales. She explained uh, her philosophy to us, and uh, I think it's interesting to quote uh, verbatim her words. Quote, I tell young people that everyone can work hard to change the life of another man, that we need to teach love, not hate. No guns, yes, sharp brains. It's up to us to make this country great. There are inequalities, but together we can solve our problems. Our differences should not divide us, we are only free if we are all free. We can achieve so many goals together, and this is important to understand, especially now that the nation is so divided." Unquote. Where are we? It's up to you. Okay. Dallas again. This is uh, Professor Giuliano Testa, another example of Italian excellence uh, in the United States. He is a uh, uh, he is uh, the direc director of the Abdominal uh, Transplant uh, Division at the Baylor University Medical Center in Dallas. Together with his team, he was the first in America in uh, 2017 to carry out a uterus transplant in a woman born without uh, this, this organ and to succeed in making her carry the pregnancy to term. Times named him one of the 100 most influential people in the world in 2018. Professor Testa came to America in 1990 and had a brilliant career based on these golden rules learned here. Always tell the truth. Take a responsibility. Don't try to sugarcoat or even deny reality. Now, he is partly disappointed because he sees in the US academic and political world a certain abandonment of uh, the philosophy that had attracted him to, uh, to America. We ask him about uh, the differences in career opportunities here and in Italy. He replied, quote, for me, it is the structure that prevents growth in Italy. Here, there is the freedom to innovate which allowed me to achieve uterus transplant, unquote. He has been asked many times to return to Italy, and uh, he told us that he always replies with a question, quote, how can I contribute if I come? Can I build something similar to what uh, we did here? The discussion stops there. Another, another completely different uh, uh, environment. Baton Rouge, the capital of Louisiana. This is the Mississippi in Baton Rouge, the capital of Louisiana, seen from a scenic promenade. We loved this city. We happened to attend a concert in the social uh, musical heart of Baton Rouge, the huge square between a city hall and the river. An old man with a veteran's hat and a t-shirt with a Trump's mugshot printed on the front was dancing with an African-American woman younger than him. People in the audience were blacks, who are the majority in the city, whites, who are half of the blacks, Hispanics, and some Asians. Everyone, at least here, was laughing and partying. Indeed, uh, we are in Mobile, Alabama. Indeed, we encountered uh, few political banners, poster, and flags on this trip. Here's a Taylor Swift for president that became hugely <laughs> famous. Yeah. And we didn't know it was a big deal uh, already then, and now <laughs> after the chiefs uh, won, of course. 
uh, after okay, everything even, even more. So this was Mobile, Alabama. Um, okay. Uh, this is Montgomery, the capital of Alabama. Uh, this is another very new museum, the Legacy Museum from Slavery to Mass Incar Incarceration in Montgomery, the capital of Alabama. It was created only two years ago by the lawyer Brian Stevenson, whose great-grandparents were slaves in Virginia. It is very artistic and impressive. Unfortunately, we couldn't take pictures indoor. Uh, indoor is amazing. There is multimedia uh, art. Uh, it's, it's really, really well done. Um, but it was, was, it, it, it was impossible to. Oh. It, it, we couldn't take pictures. Um, and uh, OK, where is it? I lost. Uh, ah, uh, the most uh, special section of the museum uh, is dedicated to lynchings. It is uh, uh, um, from uh, 1877 to 1950. There were 4,400 lynchings, uh, and Stevenson wants to preserve their memory. And uh, uh, linked to the museum, uh, there is a memorial for peace and justice on a nearby hill. Also, this is full of uh, uh, sculptures uh, and uh, uh, um, uh, very artistic uh, 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 things. And uh, um, especially there are hundreds of columns, uh, you see them there, that are installed, uh, one for each county um, in which there was at least one case of lynching uh, with the names of the victims engraved on it. Stevenson explained that his goal is not to, quote, punish America, but uh, to liberate America, unquote. But uh, it struck us uh, that in the museum there is no trace of the white abolitionists uh, who fought against segregation and were killed by supremacists. Unfortunately, we couldn't meet Stevenson, and so we couldn't ask him why. Okay. Athens, no. George, another university. These are the Italian teachers we met uh, at the, the University of Georgia in Athens. Thomas Peterson, Samantha Gillen, Concettina Pizzuti, Lisa Dolasinski, Jeff Kilpatrick. This uh, is uh, the oldest public college in the United States, founded in uh, 1785. It has uh, 37,000 students, including the 435 enrolled in Italian courses this year. It organizes study courses in many Italian cities, like Cortona, which is twinned with, uh, with Athens, Milan, Pavia, Turin, Modena, Montalcino, Padua, and Venice. Concettina and colleagues agree on one fact. Young American students love the Italian language and culture they are even passionate about uh, Maneskin, and they are soccer fans. In other words, there is a new Italian soft power influencing young American generations. And uh, here we were, so uh, Athens uh, was on our um, route uh, towards back uh, uh, New York, uh, along the Appalachian. Um, and, uh, here, we were driving on the Blue Ridge Parkway, another surprise of our trip. In fact, it is a special national park. It is a road that is a national park. It is a, a 469 miles or 755 kilometers road that winds over the mountain between the uh, Smoky Mountains and the Shenandoah Park. Commercial traffic is prohibited, so there are no trucks, no vans, no buses. It is uh, uh, the, second the second and only park uh, like th uh, this uh, in America. The other one is the Natchez uh, Trace Parkway, 444 ki uh, miles uh, and 715 kilometers, which uh, we also traveled uh, in parts. And here we uh, enjoyed some foliage that unfortunately this year was late. So uh, it should have been, this is, is the beginning of October, it should have been much more, you know, yellow and uh, red and, uh, okay, that was uh, that. And we recommend this, uh, especially this uh, Blue Ridge Parkway to our friends, uh, bikers, because we found many uh, cycling uh, uh, teams, uh, they, they go there with a van and then 
they ride for, uh, I don't know, they bike for, uh, I don't know, many kilometers, but it is fantastic. And also there was a fantastic museum of uh, folk music uh, that was born uh, here around uh, in, uh, in this place. So, yeah, that was the end. And having finished our trip, uh, uh, we did not come away feeling that America, so going back to the question I posed at the beginning, we did not come away feeling that America is the extremely divided, polarized, and angry country represented on social media and the mainstream news. At least not this other America, away from cities like New York or San Francisco. Yes, of course there are a lot of problems, but we also found a lot of community spirit, positive attitude, and desire to work together. We were heartened to see the belief in the American dream is still alive and well in many places. Anyway, for sure, the only sure thing is uh, that there is at least uh, one thing all Americans agree on. Everyone loves Italy and dreams to come to our country. 